All right, guys, so we've got us a reach-in freezer. I guess it's not working right. We're gonna go in here and see what's going on. Maybe we can make a video, maybe we can't. Just depends. Sometimes it's right in the way of everybody and we really don't have time for that. So let's go in here and see what we got going on. Grab the happy knee pads, keep our knees happy. All right, so we got us a old master built. Looks similar to this thing here that's doing all kinds of wacky stuff. Said it kind of came on, didn't come on, got warm, got cool, fans came on, fans didn't come on, kind of works, doesn't really kind of work, you know, you know what I mean, right? So, let's see what we got going on here. I mean, it's plugged in, but nothing much has happened. I'm not hearing compressors run. Thermostat looks like it's turned just a bit back from maximum. You got defrost, termination switch that's adjustable there. Yeah, we can hear it clocking along. It sounds like it's tracking time. Let's make sure here before we dink with it. Compressor appears to be up on top. Maybe. This thing's got a solenoid valve there. It looks like it's been spliced in 16 times. So it comes in through there and goes on up. Let's see if we can find the compressor if it's on top of the unit or maybe it's remote. I'm not seeing a compressor up there. I wonder if that thing goes somewhere outside. Let's see where our clock's actually at far as. Defrost heater stuff is off. Going over to four. We've got 244. We should be running. Clock appears to be tracking there. It's a good sign. Let's go outside and see what's going on. I'm assuming that's where it's at. Probably could twist that solenoid and see if it's powered. Should be able to feel the magnetic buzz in it. Yeah. It's hot. I can feel it buzzing when I move it. This would be the outside wall over here. I don't see anything here. There's nothing in the front of the building. So I wonder if this little condenser back here might be it. Okay. It goes up and through. So uh, it could be it, I don't know. Let's see if we can feel anything on this. Feels like it's, it sounds like it might be running. Worst case scenario, it's just a fan. I know the rest of my compressors are over there in that room there, jam packed in where it's nice and warm. I had this cold coming out of there. I'm gonna say this is probably it. It'll be labeled when I get done. I don't know why anybody else couldn't have labeled it. That would have been useful instead of wondering. I don't know why it's not mounted on anything either. It's right here in the, on the ground where all the salt and everything else, some four by fours would have been better than nothing. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's got some issues. The sun's making it a little easier to see what's going on today. Looks to me like we got a capacitor there. It's a little smoked. Contactor's pulled in, but she's not running. Uh, defrost clock looks like it's unhooked because they're doing it from the inside. Nice clock just wasting away. Well, let's see if we can uh, find out. Was the capacitor Oh, there's something that just clicked. Yeah, your run looks like it's burned a little bit, and then our start looks like it's a little jackaronied. All that disconnect. Now, see, that'd be deceiving. You'd see that there and think, well, it's the closest one to it, but it doesn't appear to be. Yeah. Looks like it's probably the closest thing since the other's a hundred. It's real life. Let's see what we got here. And then generally, it's been my experience that uh, usually the 
start relay is at fault. I mean, it could be that the run capacitor was taking a dump, start was trying to make up for it, and then it overloaded it trying to run it off the start. Or you could have a start relay that's just totally toasted. Either way, and you're best off to replace it. And unfortunately, I have some universal ones, but I don't know if that'll work. It's hard to say. Let's see if that compressor's warm. Probably should be. Yeah, it's not warm. Well, that's rubbing up against her pretty good. Let's see if we can maneuver that a little bit differently. Let's pop this cover and see if those wires are burnt inside there. Okay, they're fine. Let's check resistance on those and see if they're okay or not. So we had two ohms, four ohms, combined six ohms. So we're good on that, nothing to ground. They feel like they're pretty tight, which is good. They get lucky and just be capacitors. And honestly, that contactor needs replaced. It's burnt. Everything's kind of burnt up here. So we isolated one leg there. We have 27 microfarad out of 30. It's already getting low. It's getting replaced. This one here, the whole terminal is completely off of it. So it's shot. You can see we completely got a hole there in there. That's not good. I'm going to pull this relay out of there and see if we can see inside the guts of it. I like to just pull the relay out and look in there if it's one that you can actually take apart. You can see here that they still work, but it's not in the greatest of shapes. I mean, that uh, current or the voltage comes up, pulls down there, opens the circuit, takes the capacitor out of the circuit. Um, I could run my wire brush on it and most likely get by until we can maybe replace it. I'm going to give them that option. That way, if it blows up later and acts up because it's either sticking or whatever, we can at least say, hey, we checked it. We said we should replace it. So I'm always about, you know, doing what's right, uh, but leaving them, a, you know, a little room there because unfortunately we'll have to make a trip back uh, unless we can use one of the universals. And I'm always leery about the universal stuff. It's better than nothing if you have nothing, but I prefer the factory one. That should clean up halfway decent there. We should be able to run the brush there on that. That's why I like my stainless steel brush here. We'll get that in there. I was able to get that apart. I wish this thing would focus right. There we go, sort of. Uh, it cleaned up pretty good. It's pretty shiny. Don't look too horribly bad. Um, maybe all right to let this one go. We'll check it and see, make sure it operates correctly. Let's go ahead and get a new contactor on there. That's uh, likely a 230 volt coil, so we'll get a new one of them on. And uh, let's get these capacitors replaced. We've got a 145 and a 30. We've got a new 30 microfarad capacitor there. And we've got a new start capacitor. This one here, I made sure to add the uh, resistor, bleed resistor on there. That helps prolong the life of it. Helps prevent some of the arcing and stuff on the start relay. Got the new contactor here. It's got a bug shield on it that'll help keep some of the crud from getting in there. Even though it tested okay, you can see that the passer ripped right apart when uh, I took that wire off there. Yeah, it kind of pulled right up out of there. We're going to put two new connectors on there, which we've got some right there. Don't want to shorten them up too much, but the ones that are just black fires from the smoke flash, I'm not too worried about, but when they're burnt like that right there, those are kind of, they need replaced. Got it all in there, got the new contactor, got uh, new capacitors, everything's blown out, cleaned up. Got it on uh, amp reading there. Let's see what this thing ends up bringing in. I don't have my one that has in rush but we'll at least do a max current draw let's get this thing on and see how it does came on smooth 31 amps not the uh, greatest i've ever seen and she shut off because who knows why
Maybe we got something short cycle in the compressor and cause it to take out the star components. Got sight glass, looks a little empty there, quite a bit empty. Yeah, it looks really empty. That would cause potential problems with it uh, rapid cycling on and off, on and off. Let's go ahead and kill this thing. See if we can scan it for leaks. It's very possible that it rapid cycled over and over and then it finally blew the spark, uh, start components all up. That's very possible. So we probably have two issues going on here. Multiple offender. So we're following the line set up and over to here. And I'm not picking anything up yet. figure if it's going to be in this area here and granted also it's a freezer generally we don't have too many issues with the freezers we can like we do coolers but it would have accumulated in this box it has no place to vent to and it would have went nuts so i don't think it's in here it looks like it was an existing line set because it looks like a fairly newer condenser because it has an aluminum coil on it not picking anything up in this area here scan underneath of it because it does come around the back sides there's some fittings down there it looks like they could be shady I'm not getting anything down here either i don't know we just got a really small leak maybe didn't get completely charged up i have no idea i'm not picking anything up i have checked that pressure switch out there pretty good where we had some potential rubbing going on I'm not picking anything up anywhere in here well i'm scanning around this is always known for never being tightened. Uh, that comes from the factory that way. They should be responsible for that. However, obviously you're supposed to check it when you're doing a startup. You can see the oily looking substances down here. It's not recent, but I was able to unscrew it with my hand and it's definitely got a leak on it. And that's with, it's not even, that's with it not even running. So with it running, say, you know, 250 pounds or better, very likely that that could have been it. I, I don't know how low it is yet, but for the most part, that's the only thing. And like I said, you can see the oil on it. It wasn't tight at all. I literally took it off without even untightening it with a, a wrench or anything. So we'll put that on there. Let's check this Schrader core, make sure it's screwed in all the way. A lot of times they're half sticking out and people crank down on these rubber deals and they end up causing it to leak worse because they depress the, the Schrader core. Best thing you put on there is brass. Let's go ahead and put that on there and we'll tighten that up with a wrench. Let's get this thing recharged. That's about the only thing I see going on right now. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of uh, nylog on there and get her goofed up and get her recharged. It's not huge, but like I said, it's not running right now, and it's only about probably 70 degrees if you're lucky out here. So anything I'm finding, we'll go ahead and tighten up these here too. These tend to forget, be forgotten. Got those sealed up, and then I noticed here we got a little bit of plastic that's gotten sucked into the condenser fan motor shaft here. I doubt it do anything just right off the bat, but you know it could accumulate, could get into, into those bearings. Definitely ain't helping it. It's not really supposed to be there so we'll get that off in case that potentially takes out the motor later let's go ahead and turn this back on and see what we get let's see how much this thing ends up holding had about 150 140 pounds on it on the high side only about 40 something on the low just finally hit a full sight glass right at two pounds 12 ounces i stopped there to see whether it stays solid what I'm calculating is this probably holds about four pounds. I would say it probably had at least a pound in it. We're running about 81 out here. It's 70 degrees out area. Taking that times 15%, we should add about nine more ounces. So it should be about three pounds and a couple ounces for our winter charge since we're kind of now in the, in, the, uh, in the summertime or soon to be summertime. So we'll go ahead and add that little extra there and then uh, we're gonna recheck it for leaks now that we've got more pressure in it, which it's not a whole lot higher than what it was. 
Static pressure is around 150 and went 173, so it's not crazy high. So we took it up to three pounds and a half. Around about a 12 below on the evaporator, which fans may not be on yet. So let's go in there and take a look at that. Fans are on, which is nice. It is getting cooler. Looks like we're already at 30. 45 on the one, 30 on the other. I'm sure they're both accurate. Probably not. Got negative 20 on that one. And like negative yeah. 10 on that one there. I'd rather explain why my suction pressure is a little low. Scan it over one more time. I'm not picking up anything at all. I'll try one time inside here. Another nice thing about this, it doesn't false alarm just because you're going into cold environments. Nothing. I don't know. Double checking the clock there. Everything looks fine on it. Go ahead and slip all this back to it was. Everything seems about right. We can set it up. I'm gonna do a defrost, make sure it now and shuts off like it's supposed to. Fans shut off, that's good. Let's go outside and see if it shuts off. Alright. Looks like it pumps down and shuts off, so we're good there. Take it back out because I don't think we need to defrost anytime soon be close enough. I want to be off by about an hour. Looks like our temps still look pretty good. I'd say we're doing fine. The leak had to have been in that one spot. If it is somewhere else, I can't find it. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.